morning, Port Ritchie, Hudson, Newport Ritchie, and all the area around here, all those who join us, all those members of King of Kings who join us here for our virtual worship. Also, welcome to all those, both near and far, those people who have been tuning in wherever you are. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and celebrate, and celebrate through worship and be glad in it. I want to thank Chris Viola for stepping up this morning and, and doing the worship assistant parts. I have a few brief announcements that I want to give you. First, October 10th, we are having a garage sale, yard sale. It's actually an outreach sale. It's a chance to welcome the community here. It will be outside. It will be socially distanced. We are going to hopefully be able to enforce masks. The following day on the 11th, we will be doing driving communion. And here's a big exciting announcement on October 25th at 10 o'clock, we will be having a worship service here. Well, not in here, actually out there. We're going to be using the overhang and the drive through area for a place to set up chairs at appropriate distance. Masks again, there'll be no singing. And there will also be overflow parking lot for the front. This is a, something we've been talking about. So we're going to be gathering to worship on October 25th at 10 o'clock. Now, we have a rain date of the following week, November 1st. And the rain only is if we're getting one of those Florida deluges that it just makes it impossible to do anything. So if it's a little drizzly or sunshiny, we'll be here October 25th worshiping together. Uh, just an update, while COVID-19 is continuing to lessen in our state, we are still looking at around, over a course of a week, about 3,000 cases a day on average. Um, we here in the zip code of 34668 are actually in the hottest spot in Pasco County. We have more cases in this zip code than any other zip code in Pasco County. So it's very important that we continue to keep those uh, tenants of social distancing, wearing masks, and avoiding gatherings in inside spaces because it is the recirculating air that is the most problematic. Um, it's come to our attention that Sandy Pond has been dealing with um, an illness and has been at home and in the hospital That's for the last scary. couple of weeks. Um, so we want to send her her prayers and also send her a blanket that has the prayers and the healing poured into it from all her family here. So you at home, I invite you now to put your hands out. And Chris, if you'll put your hands out and let us pray. God of all creation, God of all health and healing. We ask that you pour all our love and all our, our well wishes, as well as you pour your spirit of healing into this moment, into this time, even into this simple quilt here. We ask that when Sandy wraps herself in this quilt, that she feels the healing, that she feels the love, that she feels the presence of all of us there with her praying for her, being with her through this time of illness. We pray all this in your precious son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So with that, let us begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We, we keep, keep your, your gift, gift of salvation, salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast us away our transgressions, and turn us again to life, life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, 
Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in the freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with you. Please join me in praying for the prayer of the day. God, God of love, love, giver of, of life, you, you know, know our frailties and failings. And give, give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. If then there is an encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility. Regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but <clears throat> emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and even every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, Work out all your own salvation with the fear of trembling, and for <clears throat> it is God that is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work from his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 25. To you, O Lord. I lift up my soul. My God, I put trust in you. Let me not put, be put to shame. 
nor my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are ever from everlasting. Remember not the sins of your mouth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore you teach sinners in their, your way. You lead the lowly in justice. And you teach the lowly your way. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question and if you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your mind and believe him. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It was back in the early 90s. Uh, we were just coming back from having been on strike for a little while now, having been part of a trade union. Um, there were, in the 34 years that I was actively working, we did go on strike, I think about four times. It was never really um, that many times. And it was never really that, that long. I think the longest I ever remember was a week. Most time it was only three days. But we had just come back. It was a Monday morning. We were coming back from being on strike for, it might have been a week. And I pulled up on a job that I hadn't been to yet. And I was sitting there waiting for the time to start. And I got out of my truck. And one of the other guys who had been on the job, I presume, came over to me and said, so are you in charge? I said, no, I'm just here to work today. He goes, no, he says, uh, Bob, who was running that job, has, is down in South Carolina right now golfing. He's going to be there this week. So I figured you might be in charge. Well, yeah, I was at that time with that company. I worked for them quite a few years. I was a foreman, and I was a foreman, as I understood it, because I was paid to be a foreman all the time. I was a foreman all the time. Uh, whether I was running a job or whether I was working on somebody else's job, there was a responsibility. So I just sort of grumbled, shook my head, and walked into the job site and started opening the gang boxes. And as the guys came in, filtering in to the start, it was 7 in the morning, I would just basically ask them the same question. What were you doing before we went on strike? They tell me, I said, well, can you go back and do that right now? They said, sure. Well, I got, there was only, it wasn't a big crew. There were maybe eight guys total on the job. And I'd gotten through about a little over half, and there were a few guys standing back. And the one turned to me and looked. He goes, so who put you in charge this morning? And I looked at him, and I said, are you here to work today, or are you here to play games? 
He sort of grumbled, got his tools out, and I asked him the same question, what were you doing before, and set him off to work. And right after that, I went across the parking lot to where the trailer was and walked in, and I introduced myself to the superintendent, who I'd never met before. But I knew of him, and he knew of me, because our companies did a lot of work together. And he said the same thing, so I guess you're in charge. I said, well, I'm just going to make that official right now. And I called my boss and got him at home and said, oh, by the way, in case you forgot, Bob is on vacation this week. So I'm here at Bob's job, and I just sort of got everybody going. Now, if you want to put somebody else in charge, I understand. But meanwhile, everybody started working. Oh, no, thank you. Why don't you just figure on being in charge this week? The reason I tell that story is that challenge to authority, that quite often stated in who put you in charge, or as it said in the gospel this morning, by what authority do you say these things? Now, in the context of the gospel, we have to also have known what came before the start of this morning's reading. And just a few verses before, there was the scene of Jesus after he had come into Jerusalem that very first day in Jerusalem that he was there after that wonderful Palm Sunday tribute. He came into the temple and drove out the money changers and the salesmen and all the people that were at the table selling, exchanging cash, selling the appropriate sacrificial animals and everybody making a profit. And he basically drove them out of the temple. And then he even had the gall to reach out to the blind and the lame and teach them and heal them. So not only did he interrupt the cash flow, interrupt the temple economy, he also invited all the unwashed least of these that would come to the temple and hang around outside looking for just a few scraps or trying to find just enough that they could exchange Roman coin for Hebrew coin for temple coin to purchase an overpriced dove to ask for forgiveness in the hope that their ailment, their poverty, will be lessened. See, it wasn't just the commerce that Jesus was offended by. It was the very idea that here was God's temple being turned into an institution that was oppressing the oppressed further, that was making money off the very poorest with somehow the fleeting hope that God might lessen their ailment in life. Now, I understand, believe me, that churches need finances. And we're going to be getting to talking about the importance of stewardship and our, the gift that we have been given to be able to give. But this is not the point of this lesson. The point of this lesson of the driving the money changers out of the temple, it's when the church gets into league with those aspects of society that are taking advantage of, that are abusing and abusing the poorest and the most vulnerable in society. And this is what the chief priests and the elders were upset about. And they called on Jesus to prove what his authority was. And he so carefully sidestepped them with that question. Well, John's baptism, was it of heaven or was it human institution? And it took him back because while they didn't like John, in fact, John, what did John call them? Reeds blowing in the wind, you know? Yeah, br you brood of vipers. John had a lot of really harsh words for the temple authorities. But the crowd, the people, were resonated with what John was saying. The people were hungry for an experience of God. And John said, just come and be washed. Come and submit to God's will and ask for forgiveness for all the things that you've done in life that have separated you from God. And this really spoke to the people. 
and because the temple authority was afraid of the people, because those in authority know that they need the people. They need the oppressed, they need the downcast, they need all the people to allow them to have authority. But yet, they keep trying to keep that secret from us. But it is we, as the people, who have the authority, who give them the authority. And once that authority of a public office has been corroded, that authority is lost. And this is a point that I've made. I made it at the time where I was in Philadelphia and I was serving as a police chaplain. And I had conversations with police officers about that thin blue wall, that blue line that sort of surrounds each police officer when anything has gone wrong to defend their own, which I get defending your own. But when one of your own is wrong, there comes a time that by defending them, you diminish yourself. And the example that I used with the police was I said when the church did not publicly acknowledge the presence of corrupt priests, of ch priests who were abusing children, and instead tried to sweep it under the rug and move them from station to station instead of acknowledging it and asking for forgiveness. They lost some of their authority. They lost some of the respect. And that loss translated to all of us who wear collars, to all of us who are ordained, to all of us clergy. That loss translated to every one of us. And by the same token, that continuing to defend one of your own who is wrong, who has done wrong, who maybe shouldn't be there, or at least needs a very firm amount of discipline, lessens the respect and the authority of all of you. Yes, we have to begin to wonder. When we have a Senate that now will rush full speed ahead to make sure that they confirm a Supreme Court justice in record time. Yet we have been waiting for weeks and weeks and months and months and months for them to put some sort of legislation out there that will ease the suffering of all those who've been affected by this coronavirus, for all those whose jobs not just have been lost temporarily but lost permanently, for all those who are looking at eviction because they cannot pay the rent, for all those that are facing bills and hardship because of something that was out of their control. When they can't make a move on that, but yet as soon as this happens, bang, they go, I don't think Jesus would turn tables. I think he would turn seats. That's all I'm saying on that. <sighs> By what authority do you say these things? For me as a pastor, one of the things that still brings chills to me, still humbles me, after all this time, still makes me realize the, the real need of this office is when I get to speak those words of absolution after the confession. When I, got, when I get to say to people, your sins are forgiven. It's one of those powers I refer to them as the pastoral superpowers. One of those powers that has been passed down through the ages. It's one of the things that Jesus said to his disciples. In John, when he breathed on them and said, I give you the power to forgive or retain. It is a very profound, humbling power to have. I remember one time doing a premarital counseling with a couple. And it became evident to me that the man was carrying around all sorts of guilt that had turned inward on himself and had, was still carrying this around stuff from childhood that he had done or perceived that he had done and it was affecting his ability to connect with his soon-to-be wife. And I remember saying to him, and I'm going to read the words because I don't want to get them wrong, and many of you who are 
Lutheran would remember this. After the confession, the minister stands and addresses the conversation, the congregation. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sakes forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority. There's that word again, authority. By his authority. By the authority of Christ. By the authority of the Son of God. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I remember saying that declaration, those words of absolution. And the word absolution means absolute. Okay? I remember saying that words to that man and seeing the weight lift from him. Because I don't think that he'd ever really internalize those words if he had ever heard them before. The power of forgiving is a tremendous power. And as a power that as a pastor, I think we need to use liberally. But you know, the authority that Jesus gives is not just given to those of us who happen to have hands laid on us and ordained. On the last day that Jesus was on earth with his disciples, before he ascended into heaven, he said to his followers, all authority has been given to me by the Father. I now I tell you to go out and spread this good news. Tell everybody about that forgiveness. Go out and baptize all peoples in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So my question to you this morning is, are you here to play games or are you ready to go to work? Amen. Christ, you have heard the word of faith, the gospel of salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. <clears throat> in all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized within the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful and where it struggles, shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your son took on all of bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged, so that all of our creation confesses that you are Lord, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Turn the nations towards life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new heart and new spirits. When sin permeates our cultures and institutions, <clears throat> change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our lives are yours, O God. Relieve the suffering of those who are in, ill in body and mind or spirit. Defend the lives and the welfare of the children who are abused or neglected, hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Turn this congregation away from our own interests towards the interests of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless the ministries of our care in our community, especially Nancy, Wendy, Christine, Isabel, Isaiah, Rose, Robert, Violet, Bob, Florence, Joy, Suzette, Scott, and Sandy. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, tax collectors, prostitutes, likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ is Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else that you need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen.
Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be Thanks to God. Be to God.